Hi guys, it's Andrea. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're doing a colour and chat. Quick disclaimer, this is an adult channel. The videos are not made for children or intended for children in any way, shape or form. Let's crack on. Today we're going to do a picture of Nightfall by Maria Troll, or Maria Trolley, however you want to pronounce it. I'm just going to do a simple one. It's the end of the month and we're just going to do this little girl sitting on a sunflower. I think it's cute. And I'm just going to get myself in the right position. Sorry. So we'll, we, I've got the Black Widows out because I've been doing the Black Widow um, thing. So I'm just I'm just going to carry on using those for now. But uh, obviously I'm, I've got all the pencils, not just the uh, Monarchs. The Monarch, a second part of the Monarch video will be up on Tuesday night. So yeah check out what we coloured and how it looks. So, how are you all? Are you okay? Hope you're all keeping very well. Um, we're fine here. I just want to say hello to all my new subscribers. If you're new here and this is your first visit, thank you very much for joining me. It's much appreciated. And if you are a subscriber who's been around for a while, Thank you for coming back. I do appreciate you sticking with me while I keep colouring and encourage you to colour because that's what I want. So if you don't know, I do have a Facebook group called Adri's Attic Colouring Room. Not much goes in there. I usually just use it to notify people that there are videos up if they're not, you know, and sometimes pictures. And I would like people to put pictures in there if they so wish um, so I can see what you're colouring because I do like to see if you've got an Instagram or a colouring channel, let me know and I'll go over and have a look and probably follow you if I'm not already. In fact, I will follow you if I'm not following you already because that's the kind of person I am. Uh, I love looking at all the pictures people colour. And I love uh, seeing what you guys have been up to. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to be... It's not a very... Uh, uh, a lot of skin, so I'm not too worried about getting a lot of it right. So just put a little bit of another colour in right. just thought we do that the rain here today has been atrocious it hammered down all day up to about three half past three when it sort of eased off and stopped I was at my mum's and I'd gone in the car and it was nice when we came back so when Paul finished he took Jennifer for a quick walk up the canal but then she freaked out because she loves watching dogs but she doesn't like it if they're near her. Terrified of them she is. So we uh, we went, well I, I, I stayed at home because I was doing other things. Um, apparently she saw the next door walking their dog or the kids dog, somebody's dog anyway, and she saw them walking the dog which is fine and she wanted to follow the dog because she wanted to look at it. Um, but then she was behind the dog watching it, but then she ha they had to pass the dog because the dog had stopped, had stopped to do its business, which is, you know, allowed. <laughs> Dogs do their business. And um, so they had to go past it. And after that, she was freaked because she was constantly looking behind herself. She doesn't like them. I, I mean, she's had a couple of dogs jump up at her and she doesn't like that, which is understandable. She's only little. And um, she gets very, very upset and she panics. And then Paul had to carry her all the way back. He was not impressed because she's not a light little baby anymore. She is a, she's a two, year, two and a half year old. She's exactly where she should be. But she just does not like it. I mean, to the point that we were at mum and dad's and Rosie came into the front room. Normally she's shut out, but we were getting ready to go out and we have to go out past her anyway. She came into the room and stood by Jennifer and Jennifer screamed. She frightened the dog. The poor dog was terrified. Um, but, you know, it's weird. I mean, it's weird for me because I grew up with dogs. We had dogs... Well, we had a dog when I was a kid because my mum had a rough collie that she got before my elder brother was born. So by the time I came along, Sheena was 
six. She must have been getting on for six. Five or six. So she was always a part of my life. I knew nothing different. And rough collies are so placid and they're so good with kids. That we always were, you know. And she's so she was so protective of Richard, my older brother. Because he sort of grew up together. But yeah, she was probably about five when I was born. They got a uh, 68, 69. And she, you know, she would growl if anyone went near him. Anyone. She was good as gold. Um, so, having been brought up with dogs, I don't understand why Jennifer's afraid of them, but then I've always had them around me, so... Yeah. So, so, but uh, hopefully it's something she will grow out of as she gets older. To be honest, my, my great-niece was terrified as well, and they've actually got a dog now. And they've got Dashend. And I don't have a problem with Dachshunds, I love them, I think they're lovely dogs, but they're very hard to train and they can be quite yappy and nippy and they're little. I mean, Paul's mum's got a Dachshund and I like her, she's alright. But I, I do, I'm a bit of a rough collie girl because we had one when I was a kid. We've had Border Collie, we had a Border Collie, we've had a Beach and Freezy at one point, and then. My mum had a Spaniel Suki cross, and then Misty was a pure Shetland sheepdog. And of course, now Rose, who is also a pure rough collie. And she's as gentle as a lamb. She hardly ever makes a noise. She doesn't make a lot of noise. So it's, there are certain things she will bark at. She'll bark at, at Dad when he puts his shoes on because she knows he's about to go out. She'll bark at my mum when she brushes her hair for some reason. Doesn't like the washing machine spinning out. She's not keen on thunder. Um, the strimmer makes her bark. So there's certain little things make her bark but you hardly ever hear. It's so rare to hear that little dog, that dog, well she's not little, she's quite big. That dog bark because she's just so quiet and so placid. She's just lovely. She's a sweet dog. Oh, there's a dog barking now. Probably one of next doors. I'm. Um, I don't mind dogs. It's like everything. You treat them with respect and with care. They'll be all. Right. You know, most of them are all right. Of course, you do always get the the odd one that's not and can be vicious, but yeah. Humans are vicious, aren't they? Let's be honest. Some of these widows are getting very short. <laughs> so I'm glad I've got some new ones. I am replacing my sets because I use them so much. Um, so I've, I've all, I'm already on my second set of Black Widows. I've got a second set of Scorpion. And then this month I'm going to get a set, another set of um, cobras. I'll just get one every month. And that way I've... Uh... You can order them open and stop, but they've got to come from Australia, so they'll take forever, and I'm too impatient to, to wait. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I am just too impatient to wait. So it's nearly the end of the month. We're almost in September. Jennifer goes back to nursery next week, which I'm both looking forward to because I'll be able to get on with my work properly. And I'm also dreading because I'm so used to having her around now, I'm going to hate it that she's not, not here with us. But it's better for her to be around kids her age. And there's not a huge amount of kids in the nursery at the moment, so she's just terrified of everybody she's terrified of everything she's terrified of, of children adults she's not so bad with because she's around adults a lot more she's still wary she still hides behind me or Paul if we're there but she 
needs to be with kids her own age so she starts getting used to them again. I mean she never really played with the other kids, she was kept herself to herself most of the time but I'm hoping that now she might start making, now she's getting older, she might make some friends and be able to stay friends with them. Because I remember there was this one lovely little girl at the other nursery she went to before all this happened and we all started working from home and Jennifer, she liked her and she'd say her name occasionally but she still wouldn't go with her and this little girl said hello to her and Jennifer didn't answer and this poor girl, she said she doesn't like me to her mum. I said, I'll, don't worry, she, she does like you. She's just very, very shy of people and I don't know why because she sees you every day. But it's not that she doesn't like you, she's just, she's just a very wary child. And there's nothing we've done because we've always encouraged her to have fun and she's getting a little bit braver slowly but... Hopefully this will help, and you know, I've got, I've already booked off Thursday. She's back in nursery and I've booked a day off. It's just so I can crack on with doing some eBay work because it's hard to do it and even I haven't really bothered much this month and I've, I've made profit and I'm happy with that. But it's hard because I've not been going out sourcing like in previous years. Um, thinking of going out on Saturday, just to Newport, just to have a look, um, see how things are, are doing, see if there's anything open. It is record day drop one, record store day drop one on uh, Saturday. And there's a few good records in there, not, I mean, not, not much. I, I don't like paying horrific amounts of money for my vinyl. Part of it is the fact I like the hunt. I like finding good stuff as a bargain and what I think is good stuff isn't what other people would consider good, it's just individual tastes. So, but we might pop along to Diverse Vinyl and see what's happening. You've got to go there and, and they're not going to have a long queue, they're going to give everybody tickets and numbers and a time to come back and they're going to allow people in for 10 minutes at a time to have a look and choose their records and then go so we might pop down I'm not bothered I just want to have a quick look I like looking at the records if there's something there I quite fancy I've had a look at the list and there's a few bits that look interesting but it's whether or not they'll have them when I get there and I'm not bothered if they don't because I can have a look somewhere else for other things it's a shame that the full proper records all day had to be cancelled because that's always the same day as they have a record fair we're probably not going to have one this year because they're revamping the Newport Market and I mean they might have it somewhere else they could probably have it at the, the leisure centre which would be even better because it's nearer than the market but the guy that used to run criminal records he's shut up shop because he doesn't want to pay the exorbitant price that the the company are saying they're going to give them so much free rent and then they've got to pay and it's quite high from what I gather and he's just not willing to do it so He's still running his company, he's just running it from home at the moment. He might look for premises um, in the high street if he can find somewhere. It'd be nice if he could. Because he worked at Rockaway Records, which was upstairs with Troutmark. Back in the 80s and 90s. And then they refurbished up there and everybody moved downstairs. Of course that refurbishment didn't work because the upstairs has been pretty much abandoned since. They put all these artisan units in and nobody used them. They use them for like about a little bit and then everybody stopped using them and the only thing that ever happened up there was a flea market every Wednesday and possibly Saturday but definitely Wednesday. No, I think it was just Wednesdays. And things like the record fair which was three times a year. And for many years we couldn't go because it was always when I was working and then they moved it on, on well, on the Christmas one was always on a, on a on a Friday then they moved it to the Saturday after Christmas and it was all right I could go then because I don't work on Saturdays which is great but I don't know what's going to happen now I'm assuming there won't be any more or if they are they'll they'll have to put it somewhere like um the leisure centre maybe they've got a big room there they could use or Possibly the uh, Riverside Centre. 
I mean, it'd be nice if they did. Con oh my! Did you hear my hand click then? It'd be nice. I do like the record fair. I I do buy from them. I think I've got some good stuff from the record fair in the past, whether it be singles or albums. And I think it would be a shame if they stopped doing it because it is a very enjoyable event. You know, so have a look at the records and the CDs and. They have books as well, and um, you know. So yeah, I'm still watching a lot of YouTube. Our Wi-Fi broke, not our Wi-Fi, but our Wi-Fi extender that uh, boosts the signal for upstairs got broken because we had a big delivery cam, a new mattress it got broken I the somehow um, so we ordered a new one and that's working fine now so I've got my Wi-Fi back in my bedroom or well, spare bedroom because um, I like to sit in the and watch YouTube at night when I'm colouring if I can't sleep or You know, I don't just do a pool that way. When I'm making videos now, when I finish this, I won't go and wake him up by going in there. I'll stay in here. And I'm watching a YouTube channel called Analog Resurgence at the moment, which is about analog photography. I've just started watching him and I'm working my way through the back ones, although I'm watching the newest um, videos, which have been on Polaroid instant film cameras, which I think is interesting. I've got a Polaroid. And I do like to use my Polaroid occasionally. It's very expensive, though, Polaroid film. But then I think film photography is expensive regardless of, of whether you're using 35mm medium format sheet film or, or Instax or Polaroid film. So, yeah. It is, it's, it's an expensive hobby. I've got a load of roll films that need developing and I could do them but it's very difficult with a young child because she doesn't understand that I can't be disturbed for 15 to 20 minutes or an hour if it's colour or whatever, however long it takes. Because, you know, yes, once I've done a black and white film it might take 15 minutes to develop, or less usually, um, and I, once it's in the fixer I can leave it. She, you know, it's getting to that point. white bits really strongly on the camera lens but when you look at them here for instance this one it's, it hardly shows up on the, the thing but then you know it's fine like that with a bit of uh, lighter colour in it that's the idea I'm always afraid of colouring in these books because the pictures are so studded I don't want to to ruin them it's like the Hannah Carlson ones and the Clara Markovas. They're just such beautiful books. And not so much these ones, but the Clara Markovas are so expensive. You just don't want to ruin them. You don't want to colour in them in case you wreck the picture. That's how I feel anyway. So, yeah. But I'm quite liking the way this is turning out so far. So. Yeah, I quite like this. I like these yellows. They've got some lovely yellows in the Black Widows. I'll be honest, I am still working on my Kirby Rosannas. It is taking for ages. I've had a break from it at the moment because I'm trying to finish up the ones I want to finish for the end of the month because i got so many and, and that's something I'm quite happy to just sit there and do a little bit every day, like a couple of... I'm doing the balloons one um, in Imagimorphia. I do a, a balloon here and there or one of the birds or one of the plants. There's not a lot left to do. It is getting there. I might do some tomorrow, actually. Because um, 
That would be nice. The only thing I don't like about YouTube, I've got it on pause at the moment and then it pauses for so long and then it freezes. Oh dear, hang on, let me put that on pause. It's an advert, but never mind. I'll uh, sort that out in a minute when the camera switches off. Well, it's not for 10 minutes yet, just under. There we go. I'm looking at the screen and just trying to get some of the white. It's just the light together, there's a bit of white there. So yeah, I would like to go into Newport, just to have a wander around. A lot of people hate Newport, they always put it down saying it's horrible. There's no point in going to Newport, it's a waste, there's nothing there. I still quite like Newport, I'm not one for big crowds. And I find Cardiff gets too crowded. And that's at normal times, let alone with what's going on now. So, I'm, I've missed a bit of skin down here where her legs are. And that's actually probably a bit of a bad thing, but I'm just going to kind of in some of these in a black first and then I'll go over them with a brown. That's why I'm not worrying about getting all of it done because we're going to go over it with another colour in a minute. I'll do the, the other little bit of skin in a sec. What colour shall I use this one? Yeah. So I've been watching lots of um, documentaries, as I do, because um, I do. I am interested in history and things like that. So um, I watched one on a timeline called Pandemic, London's Great Plague which was, of course, about the um, bubonic plague of 1665. And it was quite strange watching it, actually. And it's very sad, because rather than just tell you the story of how many died, and this is what caused it, and this is what ended it, and all this stuff, they actually went to one of the parish records and, and picked a, a small street in one of the poor areas um, and focused on that street and the people and the people's names and their occupations, uh, you know, so what they did for a living, you know, how many people lived in the house and all that. And it was really quite sad, the, the, the fact of what happened. And I was watching it and they were saying how They would quarantine, is what we would call it now, the houses. So if somebody in the house got sick, got the plague, the house would be quarantined. The house would be boarded up and nailed shut. And, you know, nobody, uh, padlocked basically. Nobody was allowed in, except for like a nurse or somebody would drop food off and nobody was allowed out. So... If you were, if a family member had plague and there was nothing wrong with you, you were perfectly healthy, you would still be locked up for 40 days and the, or more. And the only time that they would release you was if the house had been clear of plague for 40 days. Does that sound familiar as to what's going on now? That people who have COVID symptoms are, sell, are quarantined with the healthy people that they live with. Whereas if they took at least in the plague days, the plague people out of those houses, the plague may not have spread as bad as it did. And, and that's the th one of the theories on it. So, I mean, I personally just think it's a bit too much like what's going on now, to be honest. But. And there are people suffering from being stuck in and I'm not I'm, I mean I'm at the point now where I actually want to get out and do something a bit different and see something other than just these walls and Riska although we have been out to Roth which has been nice I kind of want to go and I want to go see something do it different I'm going to Newport and, and have a look around and 
you know, it's not going to be normal. It's going to be in no way, shape or form normal. But just to see something, uh, you know, a bit different. And I think as long as we're careful, we, we should be okay. But, you know, there's a lot of, there's 35 new cases in, in Wales yesterday. And we've got one of the lowest R ratings in the country. Um, but it seems to be growing very rapidly in Cardiff. And I'm thinking that's because people are going out and socialising more there. You know, whereas perhaps somewhere like maybe Newport they're not. So, sorry, I just noticed um, just that bit under there would be. So it is very hard to know what is best to do because it's a bit scary what's going on out there. There's not a lot you can do, you just have to... We can't stay shut up for the rest of our lives, we have to. at some point try and get on with it and get back to some kind of normality and it's never going to be 100% normal, not for a very long time, if ever, but that's okay, it's, we just got to look after each other and think of everybody and be kind and considerate of other people when we're out and about and what they feel in and how they might be scared. I mean, we're all scared. That was just my phone falling off the side. Don't panic. It's nothing exciting. So, yeah. Actually enjoying this picture. I was a bit worried about colouring this one at first. We're probably only going to do this today and, and then I'll finish off the background and that separately. Um, because there's not a lot on it and I didn't want to start a big picture before the end of the month. Although obviously I will pick something quite good for the beginning of the month. I've got some very good books in this month. Well I think they're good anyway so. I might have to, um, I've got one that I want to colour in and it will be quite a detailed picture, so we'll probably do that one. Any minute now the camera is going to switch off and I'm going to uh, take a quick break, drink some tea, eat, eat a Jaffa cake. For continuing on. I'll probably try and do all of her and the flowers and then I'll just do the background, the stem and that and then I'll do the background separate. Be a longer one slightly but not completely so. I'm happy with that hair looks nice do you doing a lot of red heads lately I kind of like the red combination. New Colour in Heaven magazine's out really soon. I can't wait because it's the Halloween one. I love the Halloween one. I think I'm going to go with sort of an orangey colour for her dress even though she's red because it goes in with the yellow then. There's a really nice um, paley orange colour in the new set called Mango if I can find it. And I, I love Mango and it's very pale so I might use that along with one of the brighter oranges. So, it's going to go off any second, so. Very pale colour, it's really nice. It almost looks like I'm going to turn that off. Yeah, that 
stopped and I'm back. Right, so we're using this mango. It's a very, very light colour. But it's in keeping with the yellow of the sunflower. Like I said, I'm just going to finish the sunflower and then um, her in the sunflower and then that'll be it for this this video because the background will take ages to do and I can just sit and and do that on my own another time so no I'm just looking for a nice brighter orange what colour is that? Burnt orange, that might be a nice colour to use actually. Yeah, what's that colour? There's so many getting some pumpkins a nice colour as well. I might be using a lot of that orangey pumpkin colour soon because it's Halloween. Yeah, we'll just put this over the top. I want to make those there. I like this picture, I think it's really pretty. I'm really looking forward to colouring Heaven's Halloween special. It looks amazing. I cannot wait for it. Um, even though it's only September, I am going to be colouring in that one straight away. Well, after I film my flip through. I'm hoping it's going to come Tuesday. Um, of course, Monday here is a bank holiday this week. Well, next week, Monday the 31st is the last bank holiday before Christmas Day, or the last public holiday before Christmas Day. Um, so... Hence why I get paid on, well today actually, you'll be seeing this on Friday, I'm filming it Thursday night. And you'll be seeing it, to, you'll, I get paid today. She's so pretty. I really like this picture actually. I'm really pleased with the way that it's turned out. This one, lemonade, I think it is. Oh, that's pastel lemon, that'll do. Just to put the little trim on her. Her top, very light yellow. Yeah. Now the only thing left is something on her lips. And we'll just use one of the um, very light uh, Monarchs, I think. What's this one? This one, I think, is a pinky one. Bliss, that's a lovely name for a pencil. I didn't use all of these in the 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 um on a picture I did. So but they are lovely colours, all of them. Nothing to do on her eyes, so and now I'm just gonna have a look at my greens to see what colour I want. Now there's lots of greens in the monarchs. I've got to be honest. Uh, yeah, I think that one. Yeah. Okay, it's still. Yeah, 
this is a lovely book. I will definitely have to colour in this one again. Because it's really, really pretty. But then I've got so many other books. I've got Botanica I haven't coloured in yet. I haven't even got Flora. And I'm one of those people I like to have all the books by like these ones. I mean it's hard with Jade Summer because some of theirs are out of print and the same with someone like uh, Deborah Muller and Shay Baldy because they've got so many books out. It's impossible to do but um, Yeah, I do like the like these. I love these hardback books, which is why I really want. So I do light covering over that um, to get the Clara Markovas. Her books are so beautiful. But they're like thirty pounds a piece. That includes shipping, which is not too bad. But when I think I could possibly get six Jade Summer books for that price. But then the quality is not, paper-wise, it's not as good in the Jade Summer. And I don't like all the books that they put out, so. Although I do like most of them, I don't like them all. Yeah, the only reason I don't do the backgrounds on camera is, is something like this is going to take a while to do. I'm thinking of uh, doing a gradient background from fairly lightish blue or through the darks to black. So it's going to take a heck of a long time to do. So I'll do that off camera probably over the weekend. Ready for when. Hopefully we'll do our completed pages. And I've got another two books three books that I need to complete pages in down there and then I'm all right for the month and two of those pictures are very very close to being finished anyway. This is called leaf green I think it's a little bit dark for me for a leaf but I'm going to put this down now and then I'm going to put a lighter colour over the top and then hopefully it'll be all right but yeah I am impressed with the amount of greens in this, but uh, you'll hear more about that in the second part. Oh, I do enjoy colouring at night. It does help me relax before I go to bed. I always try and either read a little bit or colour, and probably what will happen is when I finish off the pictures I want to finish, including this one, if I finish them off, like, Saturday, I'm hoping I'll finish it off by Saturday, and then Sunday and Monday I can just read. And then I'll do my Monday wrap, my monthly wrap up. I was doing a weekly, but I just don't read enough or watch enough. I mean, I haven't watched a film again this month, not because I don't want to, it's just I just don't have the time. Um, but I have been watching a lot of YouTube channels and documentaries, which I'll talk about. I have been reading, I have finished a few books, and I have been listening to some music, which again I will show you. Some of it's been on vinyl, some of it's been on CD. I will obviously talk about that then so one of the documentaries I was watching well I would like to watch Pandemic about the Black Death I've watched stuff about Glenn Miller and then I watched um, one about the uh, murder of or the case of Jean Benet Ramsey which um, always struck me at the time of how tragic it was and how sad but uh yeah, I was watching that. It, it really it kind of got to me, that one. But then I would, because I've got a little girl, so... Terrible. Right, there you go. But I do, I mean, it's like, I love learning about things, and I'm interested in crime. I, I, 
big into the Jack the Ripper case. There's a book I want to order. I need to order it by the end of the month because it's... Um, if you order it by the end of the month, you get a signed copy. It's pre-order. And I've got the book by the other book he did, which is Ripperland. It's by Andrew Firth. Absolutely brilliant book. And he does montages of old photos and new photos of the same location. Oops, you're not even seeing what I'm doing. I do apologise. And I really like that. I've always liked that. I like it when they do it with... Um, uh, there's a group Harlow in Hollywood where they get Jean Harlow and put her up against places where she lived and worked as they are today with photos of her in exactly the same place taken, you know, so they got the old one and the new one together. So it's really clever. And he did that with Ripperland and he's doing it with this one, which is called Pictures from the Abyss, which is photographed by an American named Jack London who visited London and the East End in 1902 and photographed a lot of the area, um, including the Ripper sites, I believe, some of them. And it's where he can find the same locations. He's gone in and taken photographs of them again and he montages the two. And um, a lot of the London pictures have been used in Ripper books in the past to illustrate what it was like back in those days. Because it was after 1902 that all the slum clearance happened. And in fact, Mary Kelly's room, where she was murdered, it, was, it wasn't cleared until 1928. And apparently there was still, her blood was still on the walls. Uh, for a long time after, I think even up to when they demolished it, from what I understood, because the owner, the landlord, Joseph Barnett, didn't, wouldn't paint over it. Probably because he could charge more, <laughs> you know, sleep in the room where the Ripper met his last victim or, you know, there's that sort of gruesome thing. And people did rent it after Mary Kelly died and the blood was still on the floor and the walls which is quite horrific when you think about it. Today it would all be gutted and in some cases knocked down, like the West's house. Um, but, you know, it's very strange to think somebody wanting to live there, but then people had no choice, they had to take what they could get. But the fact that they didn't try and cover up the bloodstains to me says doesn't say much for the owners of that particular address. Um, but their people were in such dire straits, they took what they could. So. Very sad times. Um, for people. Very sad. So we're nearly finished what we're going to be doing in this video. Like I said, I will finish this off and show you in my completed pages. We will start a new picture in for the new month fairly shortly and it will be a very very detailed one so it will go on if we use pencils it'll probably go on for two or three maybe even four long episodes because it will be pencils it won't be markers because the book i'll be using is double-sided and uh i like all the designs in it so yeah it's not gonna happen so let's have a look at our little lady sitting on a sunflower there she is very pretty uh, like I said I will do the background I'm gonna probably do that over the weekend I hope you've enjoyed this current chat it's not actually much longer than, than a normal one it's about 43 to 45 minutes which is fine I hope you've enjoyed it it was just one to get out before the end of the month like I said I will finish this off before the end of the month so I can include it in my completed pages if you've enjoyed this please leave a nice comment down below oh, you don't have to leave a nice comment just leave a comment um, like it if you've liked it subscribe if you're not a subscriber and if you're a subscriber thank you and I'll see you in the next one bye guys